Today I'm going to be talking about every single One Piece villain. So I got a list here and I'm going to be going through it chronologically by order of appearance. So for example, I'll talk about everything Blackbeard related when we get to the Jaya portion. So spoilers for the manga ahead all the way to post Wano. So starting off with Higuma, the mountain bandit that we first saw in Luffy's flashback with Shanks. He was just meant to basically flex Shanks' power along with his whole crew of people. And kind of also be the Bellamy for Shanks, we'll cover him later. But yeah, not much to say beyond that. Moving on to Alvida. Now she <laughs> does come back later on. She's not much of a character, she's basically the stereotypical evil pirate. It is good because it shows a contrast between Luffy and most other pirates in the world. Most other pirates in the world are basically what you would expect, they're just power hungry, they want to get treasure, they want to get prestige. So Alvida does show very quickly that Luffy is very different from every other pirate, and yeah that backstory with Shanks shows a little bit of why. So yeah not much to say, Alvida is just a very good contrast to Luffy at the start of the story. So yeah she played a role well as well. Now we're moving on to Morgan. A lot of these early villains are kind of like set pieces to show how the world works and different angles of things like Alvida being the stereotypical pirate and Morgan being the stereotypical evil government figure. So it shows that pirates aren't all bad because we have Luffy, so far in the story anyway, that's good, and that the navy is by no means all good either, it really depends on the individual and I will come back to that later. Next up we have Buggy D Clown, our guy. I actually didn't like him at first when he um, appeared in this arc, he was just alright, but he was kind of mid at this point he really does shine later during marine Ford, with him gathering the army of prisoners from impel down then going on to become a warlord then going on to become an emperor later oh my god i did a full video on buggy you can get all my thoughts on him there if you really want so yeah i won't say much more buggy is just a legend he's one of the best characters in the series and he's really one of the best gag characters in the history of manga in my opinion i love this man next up we have kuro a lot of people hate him they think he's a trash villain because his plan wasn't the most airtight i will defend him though like his plan wasn't bad well <laughs> His plan wasn't the worst, like he just wanted to get out of the pirate life, he wanted to live a lawful life, well, not doing it by the most lawful means, but he wanted to appear like he was being lawful so he wouldn't be chased anymore cause, although he is powerful at this point in the story, he's not like top dog in the East Blue, that would be Don Krieg and Arlong, so if he were to continue being a pirate, he'd have to get a lot stronger if he wanted to compete with them, plus the Navy would be chasing him and it was way too much trouble for him basically, so he just faked his own death and went with this plan to, you know, to take advantage of this sickly girl and take all of her money by manipulating things and making it seem like he was this trustworthy guy and asking his pirates to come and kill her so he could take it. But yeah, it, it was a decent plan, you know? If Luffy wasn't there, it would have worked without a hitch, basically, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was a pretty airtight plan. I think the hate just comes from that it's pretty lame, like, the, <laughs> this pirate that's being hyped up, you know, aw, oh, the genius strategist Captain Kuro. But then he's just in hiding as a butler to a little sickly girl for years on end, I don't know. He's alright, he does get clowned by Luffy like pretty much everyone else in this arc, but hey ho. Next up we have Don Krieg, he was decent, it really showed another side of pirates that is way more dastardly and evil than we've ever seen before. I mean, he literally gets his life saved and immediately turns on a dime on the people that saved his life, so it really shows that some people will stoop to anything in this world. One Piece is often mistaken for being very childish and all that. I don't think it's very childish, I think it's just very comedic, but it is very lighthearted. it is very optimistic, I would say. But this shows that that's through Luffy's lens and that's his ideology, but people in this world will have drastically different ideas ideologies and will stoop very low and will get very dark. It's just that we see the world through Luffy's eyes so it seems more childish and um, optimistic but if you look through other characters perspectives it can get very dark. So yeah I like that that was the first peek at that. His fight with Luffy was pretty good. It was pretty much Luffy being nerfed because they were fighting over open water but that punch where he hits him through the spikes oh that was great. It was more a great moment for Luffy but yeah. Next up we got our main man Arlong. I didn't really love him at first but with the context of Fishman Island I think he's a very, very good villain now. And yeah, with that added context, Arlong Park gets a lot better. He was already a pretty good villain, don't get me wrong. He was already like B tier if you're going on a tier list. He was already like B tier, which is good. But I think Fishman Island brought him up to an A easily. And yeah, we do get the whole angle of racism between different species in this world, which is really interesting in this arc. We get that first introduction. And as I said, Fishman Island really encompasses that. And that's one of my favorite aspects of One Piece. I'm going to talk about all the arcs at 
some point, but Fishman Island is in my top 5 arcs. That is a very hot take, it would be near the bottom for most people, but the racism and discrimination angle, and Fisher Tiger, one of my favorite characters in One Piece, being in that arc is amazing, and yeah, we'll get to that later when we talk about the villains in that arc, but yeah, Arlong is a very good introduction to that, and his whole angle with Nami is just heartbreaking and brilliant at the same time. Again, he'll stoop to any level, he'll steal all her money through the navy. He really does view all humans as beneath him, it's pretty interesting because he actually isn't like Hody Jones later on, I'll get to him again, I'm just gonna briefly mention this point. He's not like Hody Jones who only cares about himself. Arlong, no matter how weak you are, if you're a fishman and you pledge yourself to him, he'll treat you like a brother, like it doesn't matter bro, you could get one shot by any human, like you could be the weakest fishman ever, but he will still go to bat for you and treat you like family. And it just goes to show how complex Arlong and many other characters are, because this gets brought up again and I'll come back to that later. Next up we have Smoker, he's not much of a villain per se, I know he doesn't really belong here, but I'm looking at a list of antagonists right now, so technically he is, but I'll be quick with it, he's pretty much the perfect counter to Morgan philosophically. It really shows that there's no good or bad, it really is a scale and it's up to the individual. I wouldn't say Smoker's like a saint or anything, but he is a pretty good dude and Morgan isn't completely evil, he's just very self-centered, very narcissistic and all of that. Even the upper upper echelon of the navy like Sengoku, Garp, even they're very honorable and good people. It shows that no matter how high up you are, there's not just one school of thought in the navy. It shows that there's a lot of ideologies in this world and yeah, it's no different for pirates either, but we will get to that later. Now it's showing me Mr. Nine, I won't talk about him, it's showing me Miss Wednesday, we won't talk about her. She's a villain very briefly, but then she's revealed to be Vivi, and I don't even remember what she did as a villain, so I can't even talk about that. Mr. Five was pretty lame, but you know, his main purpose was to just get clowned by Luffy. I don't remember if it was Luffy or Zoro who clowned him, but yeah, that was... <laughs> That was pretty hilarious, I like that scene a lot. He does come back in Lil Garden and he blows up um, Dory, I believe, forgive me if I got them mixed up, from the inside and then it's a very sad scene where he goes to fight Broggy. So yeah, he did have a role in that. He was pretty much a tool to deliver us that great moment and other great moments with the Giants, so yeah. There's not much to say about him, same with Ms. Valentine pretty much. Mr. 3 was interesting, I really liked him, he was actually very overpowered in Lil Garden. It showed the complexity of Devil Fruits and showed how you can really apply them in creative ways. I mean, he almost delivered all of the Straw Hats and L. I mean, even Zoro, he was striking that pose. I love that man. But yeah, Mr. 3 was interesting there. He did get clowned later on by Luffy. But then he comes back and Impel Down, and he was hilarious with Buggy. Their dynamic is so good, bro. I just rewatched Impel Down. It was so good. And then later on in Marine Ford, he comes in clutch by freeing Ace. Oh, that was so good. Some really nice development because at first, during Alabasta, he hated Mr. 2 because, you know, he was one rank above him. But after the events of Impel Down, Mr. 2 sacrificed himself. And Mr. 3 picked up on that and had some really cool development there. He was like, all right, I'll carry on your mantle. I'll protect Straw Hat. I'll help freeze brother just because you helped all of us to escape i'm gonna follow after your example i thought that was some really cool development but yeah maybe he'll be relevant again because he's part of the cross guild with uh buggy but yeah we'll have to see next wapole um, a lot of people hate this man a lot, but as I mentioned in my Drum Island review, I actually like one um, aspect of his character a lot, and it's not so much part of his character, it's just part of, you know, who he is in essence in the story. It shows that there's at least one naturally born monarch that is not just the perfect person, like think about it. King Cobra, um, the Fishman Island King, the King of Dressrosa, they're all like the perfect leaders, they all put themselves above their people, they're all great, and that's one of the few aspects of One Piece I didn't really like like, like, aw, all these natural born monarchs just happen to be really good people, and the only time things go wrong is when a foreign power invades and takes over, but if that never happened, they would rule just perfectly, but Wapo throws all that out of the window because yes, he's the naturally born king, it was mentioned that, it mentions that he was the son of the previous king, so yeah, he's as naturally born as they come, and he was pretty much the worst king you could imagine besides someone like Doflamingo. Next up, Crocodile, one of the best villains in One Piece, I personally didn't love him in Alabasta, he was good, he was meant saying he was powerful, but I essentially saw him the same way I see Kaido. He, he's a good villain, he's powerful, he's menacing, he has some badass lines, you know, he wants to get power. But now with the added context of Marine Ford, how he actually helped out Luffy, he helped out the cause a lot, and he had that sick line to Whitebeard, like, I don't remember being defeated by a guy that would let his ally stab him. That was a cool moment from him, also he was on smoke the entire war, he had some really sick moments like going for Whitebeard and Luffy stopping him, and going for Doflamingo and going 
and for all these people like bro my man was insane during the war and it shows he doesn't have a one-track mind like he can let things go if he was really better he would have taken the first chance to kill luffy but he actually saves luffy a couple of times he switches over from just wanting to kill whitebeard to actually wanting to defeat the navy because he has beef with them as well for locking him up and yeah at this point his motivations are quite interesting i can't wait to see where he goes alongside mihawk with the cross guild and yeah i think he will be very interesting coming back okay so bellamy i mentioned him a bit before but i actually really like his character it shows a side to pirates again a lot of these villains in early one piece especially they're kind of like plot devices in a way where they represent a given ideology that has to exist in the world somewhere so bellamy has the ideology that the age of pirates dreaming is over you have to be ruthless and steal treasure and get glory that's the only thing that matters the one piece the sky island they're not real they're all pipe dreams and yeah we all know the scene where he beats up luffy and zoro and they're just standing there nami's begging them to fight back and luffy doesn't because he's trying to uphold shanks's word a lot of people think this is different because nah they were actually injuring him and zoro like like the mountain bandits only poured drinks on shanks spit on him like it wasn't a big deal but compared to that this is a lot more violent but i personally think in his mind luffy just didn't know where the line was he was trying to follow shanks because remember he only knew shanks for a very short amount of time he wouldn't know what shanks would do i don't know would shanks just let himself get like cut up and beat up and not do anything about it we don't know and luffy doesn't know either so he's just trying to follow shanks's example to the end where the only time he'd fight back is if they're harming his friends which he does later and yes i know they harm zoro too but but luffy viewed himself and zoro in the same boat at that moment like luffy knew zoro wasn't actually gonna get injured from this but if they attack someone that actually didn't stand a chance like cricket later and his boys then yeah he would step in and he did and delivered one of the most satisfying moments in the manga and yeah we all love that but something does surpass it later on which we will talk about but yeah luffy slaps him saitama's him with one punch and shows that the ideology of thinking dreams are over is so irrelevant to the story even the villains like blackbeard are idealistic blackbeard's convinced that all these dreams are real the sky island's real the one piece is real all of these things he's as big of a dreamer as luffy and a lot of people are as well like kaido and big mom think the one piece exists they want to go for it to accomplish their dreams they all have these outlandish dreams and it's kind of touching you know that all these pirates no matter how evil no matter how good and all this idealism and outlandish dreams are what tie them together no matter how different they are i think that's a really cool part of one piece okay eneru or anel i also have a full video on him so go check that out if you want my extended thoughts but he is quite interesting again he's not my favorite villain he's kind of like how i viewed crocodile and kaido at first and he hasn't really changed he could come back later because he went to the moon he got his own like moon pacifista army which was pretty interesting so he might come back and invade with them during the final saga i don't know i have no clue what oda plans with him but his ideology was very interesting him being a god and as i said in that eneru video i don't think he views himself as a god genuinely his ideology is just everything points towards me being a god so i'm gonna act like how a god should and i think that's very interesting personally but yeah next up is foxy <laughs> i won't dwell on him much basically he's, he's pretty funny pretty entertaining but the arc was also very boring until aokiji showed up so yeah i won't go into that that much more <laughs> and ooh, i actually got ahead of myself it actually doesn't mention on this page blackbeard being introduced in jaya that's interesting maybe it's because his arc hasn't come yet like he's not a fully realized villain but i will take this chance to talk about him anyway because he is brilliant so right from the get-go when we meet Blackbeard, he's next to Luffy, he's eating like a pie and Luffy's drinking something I think, or eating something I don't know. But basically Blackbeard loves the taste of the pie, Luffy doesn't, and then Luffy loves the taste of the drink or the food, and Blackbeard doesn't. So it shows that they both have the same passion for food in this case. They're both on the same wavelength of liking a certain type of thing, but their approach is completely opposite. My favorite way of putting it is that they're two sides of the same coin, and this carries through to everything else. They both have the exact same idealism and dream but Blackbeard wants to go about accomplishing them in completely different ways from Luffy. Luffy wants to build up a crew of great people, it doesn't matter if they're strong, it just matters if they're good at heart. Blackbeard wants to build up a crew of people that are strong, it doesn't matter how they are, it doesn't matter if they're the most horrible people on earth. Luffy wants to go on his journey, stop at islands and make friends there. Blackbeard wants to go on his journey, stop at islands, explore around and just basically cause chaos and destruction like he did on Drum Island for example, but Luffy did the exact opposite, he actually gained a new crew member there and he saved the 
place from Wapple. So yeah, things like that. They find themselves at the same crossroads, but they go the exact opposite way. And that's why I think that Blackbeard will ultimately be the main villain in the story. I don't think it'll be the world government. I don't think it'll be Eam even. I think both of them will fight against the government ultimately because they have the same goal, but for completely different reasons. They both want to get the One Piece. They both want to take down the government. Well, Luffy doesn't outwardly say he wants to take down the government, but because of everything they've done, he pretty much does. So they both want to do those things, but for Blackbeard, it's to cause chaos. But for Luffy, it's because he wants to protect his friends. So yeah, I think they will fight the government together. Not like side by side, but I think they'll fight it at different locations or maybe the same battlefield, but at different ends. I don't know, something like that. And I think ultimately at the end, it'll be a 1v1 between them for the One Piece. And I think that would be the perfect ending because Blackbeard is the complete opposite, but at the same time, the same as Luffy. And yeah, it's beautiful writing, man. He really is the perfect villain. And yeah, if Oda executes him right, he might be the greatest villain in the history of manga. Oof, Blackbeard. I really love that man so much. He's the perfect villain, the perfect character. But now we have to move on to Frankie in the Water 7 Saga. Um, Frankie was a decent villain. Like, <laughs> bro, I rewatched it and he was actually very, very evil at first. But he's kind of like Arlong in a way, but without the racism. He'll defend his family tooth and nail and he doesn't care about anyone else. But yeah, at the end when he does hear Usopp's backstory, he feels a lot of regret for what he did. I mean, as he should. And yeah, I really want to talk about how great Usopp was in this arc, but this is about the villains. So yeah, Frankie, ultimately he served his purpose as a villain, but he is much better as a straw hat. I love Frankie now, and yeah, I think he's changed a lot. Alright, Rob Lucci. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna say this a lot, but he's kind of another one like Crocodile and Alabasta. He's just very powerful. He's a goal that Luffy has to overcome, which isn't bad, but I think Oda does this a little bit much. Like, I appreciate Enru because he had a very interesting ideology, but Rob Lucci's ideology is basically I like to kill people and that's that. I joined CP9 just so I could kill people without any repercussions. So yeah, there's not much else to say and before you ask me to talk about more, I, I cannot spoil. Okay, Spandam. Um, not much to say, just a uh, classic evil villain. You're supposed to hate him and yeah, I did hate him. There's not, <laughs> not much to say beyond that. Um, he did torment Frankie and Nico Robin. So yeah, he was pretty much the perfect... He, he played his role perfectly essentially and yeah that was great okay it has garp here as an antagonist and i don't really think he is at all so i won't talk about him but just know that i love the man so yeah gecko moria oh this man <laughs> he is very very unique i will say that um his ideology is unique as well he thinks that he could become the pirate king if he <laughs> if he put luffy's shadow into ores let's just say that if all the straw hats working together were enough to defeat ores and this was the same group of straw hats that all work together to defeat one singular pacifista. It doesn't look too good for ores if, say, two pacifistas rolled up on Thriller Bark tomorrow. I don't think it would end well. So yeah, Gekko Mori is interesting by the fact he's very delusional. His whole life got ripped away from him by Kaido. He took Ryuma's body and Shisui from Wano, so that was another interesting bit of lore that he directly caused. But yeah, not much to say beyond that. Um, he did set up Little Ors Jr. pretty well by having revived Ors, and it made us kind of familiar with Ors Jr. right from the get-go because of that, stuff like that. And yeah, Thriller Bark does set up a lot of things later on, and obviously Gekko Mori was a key part of that, but there's not too much to say beyond that he, he he is okay it was mostly the title of warlord that carried him but as far as all the warlords go he's pretty much the weakest i mean if he wasn't on thriller bark like if luffy fought him at marine ford when he wasn't on home turf it would have been over in like two seconds so yeah it's no wonder that doflamingo was told to get rid of him because he really was the weakest warlord my man just keeps taking l's most recently by blackbeard he might come back he might have joined blackbeard or one theory i read from somewhere i forgot where he might actually come back as a zombie like Blackbeard like Blackbeard might give his fruit to someone else and that person will revive him as a zombie that would be a pretty good end to his character arc because this man's so obsessed with making zombies and in the end he becomes one that would be pretty poetic I think all right so next up we got the Sabai Odi arc and the main villains of this one if you want to call them that are the celestial dragons I think they are very good I think they were foreshadowed a lot by people like Wapple and recontextualized during things like Luffy's backstory I think they were done 
done very well there, along with the nobles of Goa Kingdom really contributing to that. I think that was really well done. But as for how they were in Sabayodi, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. They were meant to be hated, and they did that job very well. And again, I love to see that um, classes of people like pirates, navy men, and in this case, celestial dragons aren't just a monolith. Like that one guy from the Don Quixote clan that um, was actually convinced by Orihime in the flashbacks of Fishman Island and later came back in Reverie. Like, he actually seems like a pretty good dude now. Like, that's really interesting. And obviously, Doflamingo's father as well. I think that's really cool. And I hope we see that uh, Don Quixote member come back. I forget his name. I hope he comes back and plays a big role because he does have a lot of power as a dragon. So, yeah, I hope we see him again and other members. I think having characters different from that would be very interesting. And yeah, I can't wait to see more. But not much to say about the ones we saw in Sabeodi, like Charlos and all that. I mean, Luffy delivered the most satisfying moment in One Piece against Charlos. That was pretty much his role. And yeah, he played it to a T pretty much. I can't complain. All right, next up, we have our girl Boa Hancock. She was kind of like a villain at first. Actually, yeah, she was a villain at first. If Luffy was anyone else, she would stay being a villain the entire time. I won't talk much about her because, again, I made a video on her. So yeah, if you want, you can check that out. But yeah, I think Boa played her role as a villain but I really love her much more as an ally to Luffy and the Straw Hats so yeah that's all I'll say about her now next up is Magellan he was quite interesting in Impel Down I definitely like him like the whole angle with him and Hannibal was really cool like bro I love Hannibal he's not on this list because I don't know he's he's not the big bad like Magellan was but you know Oda's writing is phenomenal when literally during the most pinnacle part of Luffy's life our main character that we love so much like everything rides on him succeeding here and even then, Oda makes his root for Magellan and Hannibal at the same time. That's crazy. So yeah, I love these two. Um, how Magellan was always looking out for Hannibal. And how finally, at the end, oh, it was so well done. Hannibal is just gunning for this dude's job the entire arc. And then at the end, when everything's going wrong, he's like, oh god, I'm gonna lose my job. Everything's gonna be blamed on me because Magellan's not here. And then Magellan calls him up. And for the first time, he starts crying and he calls him Warden for the first time. And he starts like singing his praises because he's coming here to save the day. And I love those two, bro. I hope we see more of them. And we might, bro. I really, I'm really gunning for a second Impel Down breakout because there are some key players in Impel Down right now. So yeah, I really want to see that. Maybe not a full arc like the 25th. 30 chapters that was the original breakout maybe like one or two chapters we see like some of it that would be cool but yeah next up we have Sengoku he's not really a villain um he's kind of like the smoker I mentioned him before with Garp he's just a honorable dude he's a good dude he was um pretty much equal with Garp and Roger during the heyday and yeah, really cool character. I hope we see him fight more, but probably not. He's retired. I really like him retired. Him and Garp are like the cutest best friend old man duo I've ever seen. So yeah, I love those two. Next up is Sakazuki, aka Akainu, the new fleet admiral. Um, he, he played his role very well. He is very smart. Like his manipulations. He manipulated that dude to uh, backstab Whitebeard. He did that perfectly. He found the perfect victim and executed that to a T. And then manipulating Ace, he's not like a one one trick pony he's not like oh justice the navy is always right when he wants to manipulate he knows what makes people tick he doesn't look at things from his perspective like the best manipulators look at things from other people's perspective if they want to get you on their side they think of things that you value that they might not and if they want to go against you they think of things that'll tick you off and he did that perfectly against ace from his point of view he could have been like oh whitebeard's an evil pirate just like the rest of them like he could have just done that that's his point of view but what he actually did was go from the pirate angle. Whitebeard played second fiddle to Roger. I, as a Navy Admiral, I shouldn't be saying this, but Roger, he really earned his title as the King of the Pirates because he conquered the Grand Line. He did what no one else could do. But Whitebeard, in comparison, he played second fiddle. He was a failure compared to Roger. So he really knows how to think like a pirate. He doesn't just think, oh, pirates are subhuman. He views them as human. He knows exactly what their thought processes are. So yeah, Kainu is an excellent villain. I can't wait to see where he goes from here. All right, next up, we have Nikikado the avocado <laughs> aka the fake luffy the maro black he uh he was interesting he was funny bro i liked him he, he wasn't anything special you know he played his role very obviously but it was hilarious bro i love the return to sabayoti arc it's very good next up hody jones he is very underrated his philosophy is very interesting and it ties in perfectly with fisher tiger's backstory jimbei arlong and you'll always get people like him in a class of discriminated against people where maybe they don't experience these things directly 
they just hear about them directly from others who have but they get all these ideas in their head they build up hatred just from what they've heard even if they don't experience it and i think hody jones just he, he encapsulates that perfectly i think he's a very very good villain philosophically um him directly as a character as a person not very interesting but philosophically he is um one of the most perfect villains you could have for that arc just coming from an ideological point of view compared to fisher tiger jimbei arlong's point of view he is really the only other choice you could have compared to all of those that could be a main villain in this and i think it was done perfectly i i think he's a very good villain just based off of that he never needed to be the most complex character himself his ideology in comparison to the other ideologies conflicting with him throughout the arc did enough for me and yeah i think he is a very good villain just because of that next up we have vander decken <laughs> he's just funny bro he's just funny pretty much um <laughs> he wanted shirohoshi so bad bro <laughs> Yeah, he's not very complex. He, he just basically... He, <laughs> he just wants the most beautiful mermaid in the world, man. I mean, relatable, but his methods are not relatable at all. Pretty much. That's Vanderdecken. All right, moving on. We have Caesar Clown. All right, he is a very hateable villain and also a very lovable one as things go on. There was actually an SBS, which if you didn't know, Oda does Q&As from time to time. And someone asked him, like, why is Nami so mean to Caesar? I mean, he's a cool guy. And Oda just replied, go back and reread the manga. Like, Caesar is so likable that you forget that he literally tortured children. It would be like if that dude from Full Metal Alchemist, I forgot his name, that scientist dude. It would be like if the author of Full Metal Alchemist just, like, had him dragged around by Ed and Al for the rest of the story and he became a meme and by the end everyone just loved him and forgot what he did that's the equivalent that's how well written caesar is he's hilarious he's very powerful with his fruit not in terms of physical power but his science is very powerful he played a huge role with the smile fruits and that tying in with doflamingo and kaido was very well done and yeah i can't wait to see what he does next because he's currently in the story well i can't say it's a it's a cover story on one of the new chapters i can't say but let's just say he might be coming back all right next up doflamingo in my mind there's no contest he is the greatest villain in the history of one piece and one of the greatest villains in the history of anime and manga if not fiction in general he is brilliant he was part of the celestial dragons he was basically like a fallen king he was a fallen god and was molded by the world to become this demon he was evil from the start but the discrimination he faced definitely contributed and obviously corazon wouldn't have turned out as bad as him if they stuck together but i think he definitely would have been much worse the only reason corazon didn't become evil is because Sengoku took him in. Doflamingo is an endlessly interesting character. I could make a one hour video just talking about all aspects of his philosophy and his character and it's so interesting but I'll, I'll touch on a few points that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, One thing I really like um, just like Arlong is he actually views his crew like a family genuinely which just adds a whole nother layer of complexity to his character because you think he's gonna be just like your textbook psycho like like he doesn't care about anyone but himself but he actually really cares for his family. Like if anyone insults them he'll kill them instantly he even viewed corazon as his family even though it was pretty obvious by that point that he was a traitor he still chose to believe in him and yeah that just adds so much complexity that you can be so sadistic but at the same time so loyal and so caring for your family and again this feeds into probably the main theme of one piece that blood relations really do not matter and anyone that you meet that you form a close bond with can be exactly like family to you and yeah doflamingo is like a dark version of that which is really interesting and a really cool counter to luffy in another way so yeah i think the best villains are counters to the main characters and doflamingo is probably the second best counter to luffy aside from blackbeard because blackbeard is literally his counter in every single way but doflamingo is a different kind of counter where he is exactly like luffy in a lot of ways whereas blackbeard is the exact opposite in a lot of ways like blackbeard i don't think actually cares about his crew but doflamingo deeply cares for his crew just like luffy but he and his crew do immoral things so yeah it is just very interesting it's endlessly interesting and yeah doflamingo is definitely top five if not top three greatest villains ever for me and yeah i have nothing but incredible things to say about oda's writing and it was unexpected i'll be honest i never read one piece for the villains um from the start i was like okay the villains are kind of secondary to the world building the history and the other characters the straw hats the straw hats friends and the relationships they have with other characters like zeph for sanji and um clover for robin for example but yeah i was not expecting to be hit with a villain this good and yeah i hope oda does it again with black beard and other villains that we haven't met yet so doflamingo is definitely a crown jewel in the story of one piece so far and yeah he's just perfect i can't 
I, I would not and could not change anything to make Doflamingo better. He's the perfect villain. Okay, Jack, um, he was really good in Zoe, but he kind of petered off into Wano. He didn't really have that big of a role, but he was interesting in Zoe for sure. But he was kind of a means to an end for Zoe. Like, he could have had Queen or King come in and do the same thing. But I don't think King would have played the role as well. Queen could have definitely with his poison gas. That would have been insane. But Jack played it well, and ultimately everything he did led to a top 10 moment in history history of one piece so yeah i appreciate him just for that okay judge a phenomenal villain a sadistic evil man literally experimenting on his own children using them as weapons really a great foil to sanji and really developed sanji insanely well and he was written perfectly i mean that moment when he realizes that big mom betrayed him he's just crying there helpless like it really shows how fragile and pathetic this guy is odika just had him as this stoic big man with no emotion oh even if he's about to be killed straight face. But he shows under all of that bravado and all those evil deeds, the reason he did all of that was because he's just a pathetic evil man. And yeah, that was really well done. I love that. And the ending with Sanji was funny with Luffy saying, why did he just list all your best qualities? That was great. That was a great scene. So yeah, Judge is definitely a very good villain. Usually with the villains you're supposed to hate, I don't really hate them that much. Judge was the only one, I think, that I hated to that extent. Like, I actually hated this man so much. I didn't even feel the same way about, like, Spandom. I still hated him, but Judge, it was a whole new level, bro. Like, I wanted this dude dead from the start, man. He was insanely evil and written as well as a pure evil villain can be written so yeah i really like that uh katakuri very interesting character he pretty much carries his entire family on his back he has to be perfect at all times like he has his reputation oh he never lies on his back he's a true warrior and to find out my man just takes his time every day to have his donuts in secret and have his own relaxation time is very interesting like i never thought i'd see in one piece that caricature of oh uh, the oldest child well, he's second oldest, but he's basically the most respected. Like, the eldest child has to be perfect at all times to be an example to the younger children. Especially considering he has, like, what, 83 younger siblings? So he has to be perfect at all times, not a single posture out of place. He has to be the perfect man, he has to be the perfect role model for all of his siblings. And yeah, just to find out, my man just has to have his time every day for donuts. It was really cool, I like him. I like him a lot, um, I hope he comes back, I hope he's on Luffy's side. He's very honorable, he pretty much threw the fight with Luffy he could have won easily but he injured himself and potentially at the end even threw it again maybe he could have still won at the end but he threw it I don't know that's all up to personal interpretation but yeah I really like Katakuri really cool character really cool dude his character really sold me on him so yeah he, he's a good character now we have Charlotte Lin Lin big mom she is a very good character as far as villains I have her pretty high up I really like her a lot more than most people her PTSD and backstory were very good and maybe her ending in Wano was a little bit you know anticlimactic with her losing to Kid and Law but I think it was well done I think it was built up enough her backstory was very interesting with Mother Carmel I could definitely see myself doing a full big mom video because she really is underrated i think a lot of people hate her because they like hate how she sounds in the anime i think that's really one of the main reasons because me reading the manga i i got no inkling that she could ever be hated i thought she was cool i thought she was very powerful and menacing i thought her backstory was really interesting i thought her ideology was very interesting like there's really nothing wrong with her as a villain so yeah i think she's a very good villain and i have nothing bad to say about her all right now going on to wano we have orochi another just pure evil villain his thing with the smile fruits was just pure evil along with kaido and yeah that really goes to show this guy needs to be taken down he's like the biggest snake on earth like my man acted so innocent and of course i hated him he's another one that's just there to be hated especially since he's the one that caused the death of my guy kozuki odin one of the greatest characters in one piece i love that man so much and yeah he caused his death but you know it, the odin max story was just heartbreaking and orochi was pretty much the main cause of that and yeah that just goes to show he's a very good villain these types of villains that are just pure evil and just do the most dastardly evil things aren't my favorite like I much prefer someone like Doflamingo who does that but also is really interesting like isn't just that Orochi is kind of just that but he works really well he he's perfect in that role he's no problem throwing his pride aside if he can win at the end a lot of people wouldn't do that like he can act all innocent and subservient 
just to get to his goal in the end, like he's really slimy like that. I think that was really interesting. A nice change of pace for a One Piece villain, because I don't think we've seen a villain do something like that in a while or ever in One Piece, so yeah. I think he was handled very well and very well done overall. And finally, we have Kaido. He's probably the biggest disappointment on this list, because I thought he was going to be very interesting. I thought he would be another Doflamingo. Maybe that's on me, but... Yeah, he was built up for so long, he's the final boss of Wano that went on for like, what, four years in the manga, still going on in the anime. His backstory was decent, but more so it was to build up Gear 5 and build up Luffy. Like, Kaido's backstory was perfect in relation to Gear 5, it just made Gear 5 even more perfect than it already was. But in reference to Kaido, it didn't do much, it just foreshadowed his own defeat. And I do definitely think we'll get more. I think Kaido's gonna come back, and we're gonna get more of his backstory, and we're gonna get a much deeper look at him but for right now he is a disappointment because he was already quote unquote defeated but yeah he was very menacing he's kind of like as i said before he's kind of like crocodile and alabasta where he's just menacing powerful all of that but yeah crocodile came back and i think kaido will definitely come back as well so maybe i like him a lot more after that because i like crocodile a hell of a lot more now that he came back so yeah it might be the same for kaido and if he changes as a character as well if he gets new motivations now that he was defeated because that was what he wanted he wanted to be defeated he wanted to die but he might change now he's like okay i got defeated i didn't die but i still got what i wanted now maybe i'll change sides now maybe i'll do something else that could be really interesting and cool. I can't wait to see what Oda does with him, but I won't get my hopes up too high because we are in the final saga, so he might not have room for Kaido, but I think at the very least he'll bring him back in the final battlefield. Him and Big Mom will fight against someone. Maybe they'll just be another force against the Navy in the final battle. I think that could be cool. I think no matter what Oda does with Kaido, if he brings him back at all, it would just be hype, it would just be insane, it would break the internet. I think no matter what he does, it would improve Kaido's character in my eyes so yeah i just want to see him brought back and if we get more of his backstory that's just a big bonus for me so yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video tell me if you want me to talk about other characters maybe all the straw hats maybe another group of characters maybe the arcs i definitely want to cover every single arc in a video like this one but yeah with that all being said i will see you guys next time peace